why am I excited about this field? You know, what, what motivates at least me? Just the realization that this is the world. This is our civil, not the world, but our civilization. It's all coal, natural gas turning into everything that we need. All those things are finite and going to end pretty soon. So what will our kids do? But when I look at living things, hey, they can, they've been around for billions of years. They can use a renewable resource. They have amazing biochemistry. They can produce almost everything we get from fossil fuel. Which shouldn't be surprising. All fossil fuel came from living things. Right? And somebody actually calculated that all the fossil fuels are just 30 days of sunlight if you convert 100% of the sunlight into energy. And the best thing about life is this, you know. It's the most advanced technology on Earth. It's scalable, you know, it scales. It's scaled to, to, the, to the amount that can really change, change the world and solve many of our huge problems. Um, and it's just like computer, computer code, right? It's just not binary, it's just ATs and Gs. So I won't talk about us or democratizing creation. I think, though, this is something that we'll all be doing together. <coughs> but uh, just, you know, DNA, you can buy it today. Just buy the four letters of code. There are almost 20 companies where you can send an email attachment of DNA and get the physical DNA back. And what we need to do to self love more than anything is a place to transform living things. Transforming the action of, trans, to trans, you know, changing already existing code with new code, is adding new code to existing code. Usually, you know, writing whole genomes has been, still is very expensive, so what people are doing usually today is just uh, coding small programs and inserting it to operating systems, into living things. And that's called transformation. Now, handling DNA and doing transformation is not very expensive. Once you transform a living thing, you want to test what it does and you know, 100 different living things and do 100 different things and if you want to check for protein or for molecules, whatever, that can be expensive. But just transforming them, starting them, and then the power of nature is once you transform it, if it works, then it scales up automatically, just you know, eat and grow. So what I see doing this about is more a prototyping place. We can prototype new things. And the, the number one thing that we need is, is the ability to work with DNA. I'll talk about that. And again, what's important about what, what, why I'm, I'm so excited about this field today is this: you know, it's it's so rapidly, it's such a rapidly moving field. The price of both reading and writing DNA has been going down, you know, faster than Moore's law, you know, much faster than Moore's law. So it's really interesting. Just just two days ago, I don't know if you saw that Craig Ventil's company, Synthetic Genomics, a spin-off one of its uh, companies, to that you can today commercially older up to 2 megabits. 2 megabits, just to keep you updated, is about a medium bacteria genome. So you can commercially older it's bacterial the, it's genome. It's actually the bacteria that he created is exactly... No, no, this is 1, this is one megabase. Oh. 2 megabits. So that's already a medium bacteria. A metabase? Megabase, it's a million bases. Okay. It's like megabyte. So, so just to... Yeah, okay, this is next slide. So, oh, it's not that next slide. This is just the amazing... Part of DNA. Huh? So when you transform living things with DNA, just insert new DNA strand. DNA is fairly simple. The machinery of life is very complicated. But you use the machinery of life to read the code to to turn it from ones and zeros, from ATG, Gs and Cs, to new machines. Like this is a machine on the left. It's RNA polymerase, an enzyme that opens the DNA and transcribes new RNA molecule that then is being read by the ribosome to create new proteins. So. You're playing with like nano machines. This is crazy. This is the What's the yellow stuff? It's like the yellow stuff is RNA molecule. So it's uh, very similar to DNA. DNA is a deoxynucleic acid. It's double strand. And RNA is just a one one strand. It's a very it's a very related molecule. So it's a polymer. It contains the information in the DNA. And then the ribosome on the left side, you can see just like a computer tape in the past. You see this? Just like computer tapes. It treated three letters at a time. And uh, and uh, Translate into a growing protein chain that falls into the dimension of space to create new, new machines. And life is just non machines. And the regulation how and when to produce them. And again, it's just this red thing, this, this is the DNA, it's what we'll be working on, right? But you need living things to produce this, the hardware. But then the hardware, you know, the software creates its own hardware. This is what's amazing about life. So, just about the numbers, so the smallest thing, the smallest genome, so Okay, so usually what people are doing today is writing just small programs and setting it into, into yeast or bacteria or whatever. Those small programs are usually between 1,000 to 10,000 letters of code. Just to, just so you know what, what you know, other things are, like a polyvirus is 7,500 letters. A HIV virus is about 10,000 letters. A Ebola virus is about 18,000 letters. The smallest bacteria, which is the smallest self-replicating uh, creature, self-replicating cell, 
is the Mycoplasma genitalis. It's at 580,000 letters of code. That's the smallest bacteria, so from a few thousand to a hundred thousand. And then a eukaryotic chromosome, like yeast chromosomes, are like 2.3, 3 million megabase, and, and up, and upwards. And we have 23 uh, chromosomes, time twice, one from your father and one from your mother, uh, plus uh, the DNA in the mitochondria, but all together it's 6 million letters of code, a little bit more than that. And we are not the biggest genome, so... We're by far not the biggest Not by far, but yeah. they're like... Corn is even bigger, like... The, the biggest genome in existence is um, an amoeba. A one amoeba, cell, 600, yeah, 100 times. Like two one. measures of... Uh, of uh, two orders of magnitude. Two orders of magnitude. Yeah, but, and we can write... So, that's just a uh, bacteriophage, I just love to show it. This was the first creature, yeah, what you have here. It's the first creature that, uh, you this, know, was created synthetically. This one? Yeah, so usually what the, this virus does is inject its own DNA, its own malicious code into the operating system, in this case the bacteria. And this malicious code is used to stop the production of bacterial protein, start producing more viruses. And it's, it's 40,000 meters of code, and what the, what the researchers did here was you know, uh, just chemically synthesize the DNA and mechanically inject it. Why is it look evil? Yeah. It's, uh, it's not evil, it kills bacteria. You know, we're actually going to use it where uh, antibiotics will stop working. But this is all made by, by, by different proteins that encoded in its genome, in its source code, that it's here in this capsule. It's pretty amazing. So you can see here a bacteria infected in, uh, in, uh, in phage and producing more phages. So, and then the first, in 2010, Craig Vendel published this. It was the first synthetic cells, so a million base pair, was synth synthetically synthesized from from you know, email attachment into a whole genome that was uh, mechanically injected into cell and created a boot up a new cell based on the information uh, that uh, they that was on this DNA and our capability is just growing. Wait, so that first synthetic cell is yeah. still used and it's an existing living thing to re to create this yeah, new cell, right? They didn't create all the um, you know the membrane of the cell and the different enzymes and different. They just created the synthetic DNA. And replace the. They actually didn't replace a. One of the genes on the synthetic DNA was a gene for a restriction enzyme. It's a protein that cut DNA. The the the, the genome that they injected was uh, protected against this uh, protein, but the wild type genome was not. So the first. So they injected this genome. So this cell had two genomes for a while, but only the first protein to be expressed was this protein that chew up the other genome. But then when the cell divided. The, the, the daughter cells was exactly based on the instruction on the DNA that you injected. This is what we call synthetic life, right? So, so to analog to computers, what they did is they took a computer and they yanked out the hard drive and they inserted another hard drive inside and started it up. So it's, it's, it's like taking your... Uh, your, your Actually, they inserted a second one that caused the, that first, caused one the first one to be irrelevant. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So it's a and then they, it, they entered the Mac hard drive uh, disk and it uh, caused the Windows disk to, to dissolve and then the, the Mac, you know, <laughs> you know the, the PC just <laughs> changed it to a Mac and then yeah. we all grow to two Macs and the eight and grow and then yeah. So, yeah. I wish my Mac would be able to do that. But, yeah. <laughs> That's a difference. So we build design tools because we see the need when the you know the price going down, the capability going up for design tools. I'm not going to Jim Copaler, it's out there, you can load it, play with it. But I want to talk about the do to serve biology. I always give it as an example and you know this guy, for example, Kathal Grevy is from uh, Europe. He actually got the permission to do genetic engineering in his kitchen. So this is his kitchen. <laughs> and so he, you can do it in your kitchen. Some, uh, there are people in the Bay Area doing it in the garage, literally in the garage. I can have some picture of that. So do this about you, you. I think you all came because do this about that all were representing uh, the Israeli branch. So okay, you know, biology in the Holy Land. And I think most of you heard about GenSpace or BioCurious. So I was actually in Biocurious, I never went to Genesis, but I met the founders of DLD and other places. Um, we should definitely have one here in Israel. So just a few things that you know, even amateur people can do. So iGen is the International Genetic Engineering Machine Competition. Started in MIT 2005, now it's all over the world. So just the last year, again, undergrads, like first totally shown, okay? Kids, in, during the summer, uh, doing amazing things. This group from Utah created uh, Tanakoli. It's so E. coli that produced spidal silk. Or this group from Munich created uh, fold strains of yeast uh, to produce beer, and those strains of yeast produce, you know, anti-cancer drug, lemon taste uh, molecule, 
protein sweetener and even caffeine. So yeah. the first thing biology beer was done there. And then this group uh, changed E. coli to produce different pigments, different colors, corresponding to different diseases. So you can eat a probiotic uh, yogurt, go to the bathroom, it's very graphic, but you know what you have, right? Uh, what drug you need. And this group from Cambridge optimizes uh, bioluminescence, uh, like fireflies, uh, so much you can actually read to the light of bioluminescence. And one of our users, because it was done at iGEM and all the iGEM uh, uh, parts are in our software, is actually designing a, designed a, a construct to move this system into chloroplasts. This is the organelles in plants that uh, create, that do photosynthesis. He wants to create glowing plants. So that was his design using our software. So the enzyme that, uh, luciferase is the enzyme that uh, breaks down the fuel molecule called luciferase to produce light. So the subunit A and B of luciferase, and then three subunit to produce luciferin, and this is how you code in life, or one way you code in life. This is right. something I can do in my kitchen? This is something you can do with right? your laptop. The laptop is okay, but it doesn't shit out... Uh, no, once in, 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 in our software, and I'll get to that, but in our software you have, uh, you have a very important button, which is pricing. So once you... This is a glowing plant design, for example. I have a, a shell with the... Uh, folder with this guy that they're designing a lot of. Uh, this is one of those designs. So I can just press pricing. So just order it. So you know we are working with uh, several providers. If you have a credit card, you can just order it and okay. get the physical DNA. And this is all already mixed and ready, or is it just a part? This, this, is, this is a DNA. This is the physical DNA. You then need to transform plants with it. Okay, I'm not going to continue. Okay. Uh, I'll ask you later. No. So this is about 10,000 meters of code. Today, prices will cost about $8,000. That was amazing. <laughs> Why? With the pricing. <laughs> Just so you know. Ah. <laughs> so... I'm sorry. Shut up. Okay. So today, prices will be about 8,000, even less. You know, it's, uh, I think it's uh, obsolete prices. I think I can get it for $5,000 today. For what? SGI, SGI DNA, it's 50 cents a base per. Up to 2 megabits. What's a BP? A base, base pair, pair is a uh, one uh, nucleotide, one piece of DNA. Is one letter, a, a C G T. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is a base so, pair. So, so uh, a mega base pair is a million letters. So yeah. ten thousand base pairs. Yeah. So I don't know if you're aware of that, but we're actually going to make a project to make it happen. So just to, in the business sense, think about it today. You, you can be a business guy that don't know about biology, but say, hey, wouldn't it be cool to sell glowing oak trees in Christmas? Right? I think it's going to make a lot of money, right? So you can go to the community, crowd, crowdsource the designs, and crowdfund the DNA, because the DNA is not that expensive. Mm -hmm. And this is what, actually what we're going to do. We're going to have a, a Kickstarter campaign. We're collaborating by QS to do the transformation. We're collaborating with a lot of people from industry and academy to do the designs. And then we... 10% of this uh, campaign is already funded before we started. Just a Tony Shea from Zappos, just a 10% if I get it for uh, Las, Las Vegas. So this is going to happen. So we're going to, to go out with this project, uh, you know, the end of the, hopefully the end of the month. And keep well, telling people it's going to happen. It's getting delayed. It's a $1 million campaign? No, it's a $100,000. So... And, how would, what and what, I, what do I need to do with the biology lab is once I have the design to, to, to do the transformation to plants, and then this is a very simple thing to check. I don't need to see how much of a molecule I have. I just close the light and see, is it bright? Yeah. Is it bright enough? If not, next, right? So that's something, something fairly simple. Uh, and what, wait, simple. You, you inject this into a living plant and it will uh, override? And make it glow? No, so you have several ways to, and this is part of uh, teaching, because uh, part of the duties of biology is to teach. And uh, part of the thing that at least I want to do is, uh, I thought, always thought I was going to be a professor, and then I ended up being uh, here, so I want to teach, I really like to teach. So I want to teach uh, molecular biology to self and self, and then you'll understand more. Uh, the way you actually transform living things, in this case, well, now, we should talk afterwards. There are several ways to transform plants, one with bacterium and one with the gene gun. It's a method of using uh, DNA, um, gold gold particle uh, with DNA and just shoot them into cells. And some of the cells will get the DNA, some not, and you mm -hmm. add to your design uh, antibiotic resistance or some other resistance. Only the cell you got your design and leave. That's what you usually do. Um, so let me go through a bunch of cool stuff and then we can discuss uh, priorities. So, not this. This is not interesting. Okay. So, 
this is gel space. This is the lab space at uh, at yeah. uh, Brooklyn. Um, I think that was the first one, and I think uh, some of you saw the um, some of you saw the the TED talk. The TED talk. Yeah, yeah. And that was very inspiring. And this is a place where you know they're now doing so many different projects. Some of them is art. So, for example, what you see here is a uh, it's something very simple to do is to uh, to there are a lot of uh, uh, fluorescent protein that fluoresce when you, you know, in this oh, case wow. they use UV light and then this protein, uh, they came out of uh, jellyfish they, they have green fluorescent, red fluorescent, blue fluorescent and you can have the, the design already ready and just use it to transform bacteria and then paint with different strains of bacteria on the antibiotic uh, uh, agar plate and then when you use UV light you can see different, uh, wow. different this is art, you know, this is art more than anything this is very simple to do, and this is something I want to do for high schools. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's so simple, it's just transformation, which is very, very simple. And then you can create, you know, cool, cool uh, art forms with that. Um, and this is something they do, this is a DNA gel, don't get into it, but this is something they do in the do-it-yourself biology lab setting, for example. So this is one of the, the labs, the other one is by Curious, I was there several times. Um, so... You know, you obey a hot space for biotech. So, and again, if you look at the classes, they have classes in molecular biology. They have a, so they have a meetup, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see the different classes they have. So, uh, let's see, experiment with friends, right? So you know, you have a different lab, bioinformatic community project workshop for human genetics, for example. You know, why not, right? Biolab automation and robotic community project, trying to get the optimization and the robotics into a lab. Bioluminescence community project lab, so they have a bioluminescence group that we're going to collaborate with. Molecular biology is still a study group. So they have study groups of biology, teaching them the basics of, uh, of uh, biocell or GFP, GFP transformation class. That's uh, how you transform uh, bacteria with green fluorescent port and get the uh, cells to glow. Bioprinter, they're building a printer to print cells, to create uh, you know, 3D printing of cells. So. And this is what you can do with a meetup, with a with a space. You can do some cool stuff. And this is our growing plant project, so growingplant.com, where we talk about this is a this is a TED talk you, you saw about uh, a community lab. But uh, in different look at life. Life is amazing. Well, this is a, a one of you know, one the, growing mushrooms. Yeah. Avatar. What? Avatar. Ah no, this is real life. This is not Avatar. Yeah, and then we have some protocol, transformation protocol for our midopsis. So if you want to transform things, exactly how it works. So different temperatures and what you need and all of that. Um, that's one thing. do it -yourself biology. So I think some of you came from do it -yourself biology. They have a, a do it -yourself biology uh, group. That's the main group. Where if you have questions, you, you get a lot of people to help you. There's a lot of good questions and answers here. How to set up a lab, what you need. Some protocols, it's pretty amazing, some good things here. And of course, we have our own Dudus of Israel uh, somewhere here. So, Dudus of Israel, which is uh, a little smaller, but uh, you know, we're studying it. So, thank you for coming. Uh, but please, if you're not joining in, please join in. So, Dudus of Biology Israel. You can go there through the Dudus of Biology, just search for Israel. And uh, yeah, we are on the map. So. And you can also join on the link in the group Synthetic Biology and Bioengineering that I created. Oh, where? Israel. Oh, cool. You can join this. Israel Bioengineering. Okay. So, so one thing I want to do is to teach biology, and this is something that I'm building a course now for just basic biology to teach uh, things for my class, for my for my company, and then for people in the Davis Biology Lab. And so I want to show you one last thing, and then uh, we can just open it for discussion. But. Uh, uh, Autodesk, uh, uh, one of our biggest investors, so, so they asked me to help them spec a beautiful biology lab in their office. So we actually, what you see here is just consumable in one tab, and then uh, the equipment that you actually need. So consumables are usually you know, tips, seals, petri dish, surgical tips, uh, nitrate gloves, uh, a bunch of things that you need to have in the lab, and then the equipment. And uh, you know, freezer, minus anti freezer, incubator, small incubator, PCR machine, micro centrifuge, a few, th a few things that you need just to handle, just to handle, 
uh, you know, DNA transformation, just the basic things. And a link to how, where to buy every, each of them, right? In the, in the key, in the Makat, right? The catalog number for each of them. So we can actually spec it out and I can tell you, with 100K dollars, we can get everything we need, but we don't even need the 100,000 dollars. We can, you know, which I'm sure we can get from donations. We need a, our first priority is a physical location. Number one, and then we can start dropping equipment out of it. So, uh, Idom Batzelet from uh, Bar Ilan already said that he wants to give us some equipment. If you go to labs in Weizmann in Tel Aviv, you can find a shitload of equipment. People just throw things at you. And it's, it's not, it's like uh, just 